Hello, welcome to this episode of Hypnotist, Hypnotist Bernie's Exposition. Joining us here tonight for the first time is Dr. Janet Crane. How are you doing? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Perfect. We are live here at the National Guild of Hypnotist Convention 2016, and we have thousands of hypnotists walking around here. Uh, we're having a great weekend so far, and uh, Dr. Crane? Crane? Dr. Crane? Yes. Okay, and, uh, and your expertise is in tree reading, right? Yes. So what is tree reading? Tree reading is, the, is when you draw a tree and you draw that tree visually from your subconscious mind and your feeling. And when you look at the tree, you can interpret the tree and then you can get insight into the person's personality. Just like the FBI and law enforcement use handwriting analysis to get information about your personality, we can do the same thing with trees. And the benefit is, is that when you use hypnosis, you have real insight into the person. So it's a really, really fun time for both the client and the hypnotist. So in order for you to get an idea of what tree reading is, because most people have never heard of it, I have Joan volunteering to give me a sample of That's her tree. That's great. So, so in, in short... You can draw a tree now. In short, uh, so you're just asking your volunteer to draw a tree. Correct. And then you're going to use your skill... Yes, a, I use to... an eight-step technique that I've developed to, okay. to interpret the tree because there's no guessing. This is not psychic reading. I can't okay. tell you if you're going to win a million dollars or not. Okay. It's only what's in the tree, and I use eight steps to do that. That's great. So, so it's kind of like, can I use the analogy of like a handwriting analysis? Yes. Some people say that handwriting analysis shows you things on the left side right. of the brain and tree reading shows you visual from the right, right. side of the brain, but either okay. way, it's communicating and revealing insight about the person. And you're using like the way they, they draw or... Well, I'm going to show you as okay, soon as perfect. she's done. All right. That's perfect. So I just want to show our guests the tree. Okay. Sure. Perfect. So, Joan, you are a very nice person, right? When people say, can you help me, you say yes automatically. You're an automatic yes person. Most of the time. <laughs> Most of the time you are. Some of the time you're a big worrier, huh? Yeah. Just know that worry is not so good. But if you're going to worry, you like to worry, so worry. But just limit your time worrying. And you can worry big, like what, what's going to happen when you win a million dollars? It does, doesn't only have to be what if terrible. It could be what if amazing. So your life is like split in two different directions, right? And you don't know which way to choose right now. Is this roots? Yes. So family is very, very important to you. And you are very sensitive. And you had a big, big life-changing event in the middle of your life, right? Something big happened to you. Don't tell us what it is on the air. This is the deal. It happened to you, and you dealt with it. But you have to let it go any guilt or shame that remains from it. If, you, if some friend told you about this event, you would have said, oh, it's a little long ago, get over it. But for some reason for you, you just can't let it go. Remember, halfway through your life, you were a younger adult. You didn't have the knowledge you have now. Now with your new knowledge, you'd handle it differently. But it's bothering you. You have to just think of a way to forgive yourself the way you would advise somebody else to forgive themselves. Right? Yeah, that's true. So, but the good news is you love beautiful things, right? Absolutely. And you are a great friend because anyone, you're the go-to person for so many people. That's right, huh? Mm -hmm. And you're very strong. You've had a lot of life before you. A lot of emotional things that kind of really upset yeah. you in the past. Absolutely. But you're strong now. Just tell me about the middle of your life. Like, what are your goals for the future? Well, actually, I'm in my 60s. So my goal is to do my creative, what I creatively feel I was born to do. Well, this tree shows me that your mind is very creative. So you're definitely heading in the right way. I think what the big thing for you would be to make sure that you could get help. You're not getting a lot of support for what you feel like right now. And I think what you have to do is really ask more specifically. Don't be afraid to ask. People want to help you. It's their gift to you. 
But you have, you have all this, look at all this creative energy floating around. If you would just ask for a little create, creative help, you would find it. However, make sure you go to the right person. Mm -hmm. If you go to the wrong person, it's not going to help I've, you. You need to go to the right person. I've, I've made that mistake in the past, so I'm, I'm a little careful about it who I, uh, you know, open myself, my dreams, et cetera, to. Right, but if you find the right person and ask them, you will be a superstar. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> That's great. And thank you, Joan, for volunteering for us. And we have a next volunteer coming in to uh, show us um, to our tree. The tree was already drawn? Okay, perfect. So this is the next tree. Maybe you can like, spend some time to tell us how did you arrive to those uh Okay, so let me use advice. this tree to explain how I arrived. The okay. first thing I look at is location. Where the tree is centered on, on this, in this box. The box is the boundaries. Now, the one thing I want you to notice is that this is a specific type of tree. This is an apple tree which means that this person likes everything to be very productive. She wants everything to be so productive that she's actually selling apples or making an apple pie on this side. She gave me extra information about how important it is that everything's productive. Now, if you look at the roots, roots, roots represent family. So family is very important and plays a very big part in her life. The ground line right here and right here shows that she likes a daily routine. So even on vacation, it would be very important for you to decide what time you're going to have your afternoon drink, what time you're going to have lunch, so that as long as you have a schedule, you are happier. Is exactly. that true? Yeah, have a daily schedule. Now, do you notice how this is like a cotton top? Well, these inner loops here show me that she likes to worry also. She's perfectionistic about herself, because it's one continuous circle. But the way this cuts the, the tree trunk, it shows me that she has a tendency to be a little stubborn. Do you think, do people ever describe you as being a little I'm stubborn? I'm Taurus. Oh, she's Taurus. <laughs> Taurus the bull. They didn't give you that name for no reason. So she's a little stubborn sometimes, and sometimes that could be a problem for you because people might want to be helping you, or that you have another idea, to, you could be more productive. But when you decide it's your way or the highway, it's hard for you to listen. So it would be good if every so often you think to yourself, you know what, let me just listen. Then you could be stubborn, but at least take in the other person's advice. Now, you also had a very big life-changing event in your life. And you are a very forgiving person of other people. But your self-talk, sometimes to yourself, is not that nice. From now on, when you're about to say something not so nice, just say, stop, stop that thought. And think of a more positive thing that you could say to yourself. Make sure that your self-talk is as good as it would be to your students, to your neighbors, to your friends, to your family. Use that self-talk on you. Because you're very sensitive. Do you see how you're sensitive? And the way I know how sensitive she is, is by the bark in her tree. When people draw bark, it's trying to protect the tree trunk. Sensitive people draw bark because they want to protect themselves. So you're very sensitive. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine you're sensitive from other people's comments, how sensitive you are from your own comments? My worst enemy. Okay, well that's ended. You might have been your worst enemy yesterday, mm -hmm. but starting today, <laughs> you cannot be your worst enemy. Today, today you have to be your best mm -hmm. friend. When you leave here, I want you to say, I have to be my best friend. Thing is, you like to be productive. You like a daily routine. You're such a nice person. Just think about how much more you could produce if you were on your own team. Mm -hmm. If you got onto your own team, there would be no stopping you. Because you're already productive. You're selling apples <laughs> on the side of the road. <laughs> you could do that. Terrific. Okay? Thank do you, you have any questions? No, that's great. Do that's great. Um, um, so we thank our volunteer. Uh, Sherry. Sherry for joining us. Um, why don't we have the next volunteer coming up and I can ask sure. uh, Dr. Janet some questions. Okay. Yeah, so this, with the tree, so so far you have been um, um, using the, the drawing on the tree for an, an analysis purpose. Would the drawing on the tree also hint how you can, the person could solve the problem? Or does that advice <clears throat> So come sit down. Uh, would that advice come solely from your expertise? The thing is, is that the tree is not meant to give advice. Mm 
Okay. This is a hypnotic conference, so naturally we're using the tree to get insight to develop suggestions okay. that would be helpful. In a bar, if you ask someone to draw a tree, or at a dinner party, right. or at a social gathering, it's a wonderful networking tool because right. you get to start a conversation okay. that's more than how are the Red Sox doing this week, right. or how's the local team, or how's the weather. This gives you really good insight so that you could connect with another, with another person. Right. We live in a high-tech world. But the tree world. doesn't have the answers. The what? The tree. It doesn't have the answers. No. Th there's no answers. There's no fortune telling there's okay. nothing all it is is the tree gives you insights into the person's personality okay there's no good or bad tree okay. every tree is a good tree we mm. just want you to be the best tree you can be and in a networking situation we want to just get to know you it's hard to make small talk nowadays because people are out of out of the habit of doing it because of their computers so this gives you the opportunity to start a great meaningful conversation in less than two minutes Oh, and there's no guessing because you could just look it up. Perfect. So uh, we have a next volunteer, and your name is Amber. Amber. All right. Perfect. So I just want to show you something. The first thing I want to show you is look at how these are her roots. Are these roots? Mm -hmm. Look at how important family is to her. It's the most important thing because she just has so many roots supporting this little tree right here. Now, right on top of the roots is grass. Is that grass? Mm -hmm. Now, it's very important that you don't guess. I looked at that and I thought it was grass. She could have come back to me and said, no, it's the land or a fence. It's very important that you know what you're looking at. When somebody draws grass like this, beautiful grass, it means that you like beautiful things. Do you like beautiful things in your home? Do you like to make your home a beautiful, comfortable place? Yes, because she surrounded her tree with grass, which means she likes to decorate her home and make it a really beautiful, comfortable place. Now look what happened. Her trunk started here, and then it swung to the future, and now it's coming back. So chances are, Recently, she had a big change in her life, and now it's getting more stable. Every single branch ends in a new bud. Hmm. Do you see that? Hmm. Because her whole life is obviously budding. It's new. Something must be changing in her life. Without telling me what it is, would you say that every aspect of your life has been changing and growing, and now you're in a new, like the spring of your life again? Everything. Yes, because this looks like a spring tree to me. There's no guessing, so that's why I confirmed it. Now, if you go up to the middle, it's almost like a flower right in the middle that everything's coming from, rather than a typical tree. So there's a part of her that it's like a fantasy tree. So there's a part of her, when people draw fantasy trees, you have a million ideas. But sometimes it's hard for you to take those ideas and put them into action. People like her sometimes procrastinate a lot because they're afraid to really show who they are and branch out into the world with the real her. Her ideas are probably fabulous, but she needs a step-by-step -step plan to put it into action or else it's going to remain an idea. Now look at this one branch that's going off the page back to the past. Hmm. That one branch is telling me that there's one part of her that's really just still in the past and holding on with old habits, old thoughts, old ideas about herself that hasn't really moved into the present moment. Would you say that's true? So, for someone that's procrastinating, if I met her in a bar... We could talk about all these great ideas that she likes, or shopping, because I know she likes shopping by the beautiful things she likes in her house, or we could talk about your house. Or we could talk about, chances are, there's a lot of family here that would create a big conversation, because we might have a lot in common about the family. I know she's in the corporate world, and for her, she can use tree reading to make new friends. Now, the good thing is, is that you don't need any language to... For the tree to be on point. So it goes beyond language barriers. If you can't understand the person, you can still talk to the person because you'll know what's really important to them. It also doesn't matter if they come from a part of the world where there's only palm trees. 
people still draw other types of trees because they're drawing based on their personality. They're not necessarily drawing on the tree that's right outside the door. This tree reading is such a good thing for so many things because you really get to know people in less than two minutes and actually get to know them. Does it matter how she draws it? Do you have to like... Um, a volunteer here has drawn her tree before she come here yeah. for ex for to expedite this filming. Yeah. But uh, would if you were watching her draw it? I don't usually watch people draw it. Okay. And a lot so of this, times they can send it in. And they a lot of a lot of psychiatrists and psychologists send me trees for my opinion. I never see the person. Okay. The only thing I need to know is whether they're left-handed or right-handed because that affects which side the tree is on and how old they are because then I can tell approximately when the life-changing event was. But I don't have to see the person to read the tree. The only thing is is that you can't guess if you're not sure if this is grass and you don't see the person, you can't ask them if it's grass. You just can't answer that. But usually when you're in a social situation or a family situation or something like that, the person's right there and you can say to them, is that grass? Is that roots? You know, this could be rocks or this could be terrain. So by knowing that it's roots, then you know what it means. Okay. Now, this may be a silly question, but it doesn't look like a tree to me. <laughs> Well, that's because. What, what does she, it matter? Well, it's can a I can I ask Amber a question? Sure. Were you drawing a tree or were you drawing a flower? I had I just drew. It, okay. There was no conscious thought. I just okay. drew. I let my hand go. It was like just so. I was actually surprised at what I was drawing. Okay. It was like I don't know what this is. It's okay. my tree. It's my so tree. that's why we have a category. Yeah. There's fruit trees. There's winter trees. There's spring trees. There's pine trees. There's oak trees. And there's fantasy trees. Because okay. when you see a tree like this, this is a fantasy tree. She has a million ideas, and she's probably really, really talented in a few of those areas. But people that draw fantasy trees, they procrastinate. So it's hard to become, have their fantasy become a reality. So it's pretty consistent that when someone draws me a fantasy tree, I've seen it many times before, that they just have a big trouble getting to their goal. Okay. Is is that so? It's 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 uncannily so because I've been having many conversations this weekend and one of the, the things for me that I've been talking a lot about is I have a really hard time, like I have all these ideas, all these wonderful ideas and things I want to do. I have a hard time structuring them and putting them into motion. It's like that's a real challenge for me. So it's on so many aspects, it's like nailed like everything that's going on in my life. Are you aware of those um, traits before you draw the tree? Uh, yes, at some levels, but I think hearing it and having that validated because it's coming out in that unconscious way that it's it's very ingrained. So it's, um, it's enlightening and I think just to bring it out into the open for me to really be able to take a deeper look at it, yeah. And I don't really know her very well, right. and so all the only instruction that I gave her is draw a tree in the box. Okay. Because I, I met her at the bar and she had drawn a tree. I said, draw me a tree. I came back and there was no box. Okay. So I need to read it in relationship to the box. So she drew a very similar tree on a cocktail napkin, right. but now it's easier for me when it's on the box because I wouldn't have known if there was no box that this right. one branch... I was curious about that, too. Amber, can I ask you a question? Um, is there any reason why you draw that line outside of the box? Nope. I was... I was when when was like when I did was... when did you draw the line? Is it near the beginning of drawing the line? No, or it was towards the end, and it was just a pull to do it. It was just like, uh, I'm not done. I need this. To, I need to do this. Okay. It was it was just a, a energetic feeling like, I this, this needs to be here. And that pull, there was something in her life that's pulling her back not letting her go to the future. And that's just the reality of it, because that's why it's there. And it's a strong pull because it's outside of the box. Right. Oh, so nice. it is it is a strong pull, so that's why I need the box. But the thing is, she drew the tree, so it's her thoughts, her beliefs, it's her. I had nothing to do with it. I just walked right. in, the tree was done. I gave her no instructions, and I wasn't standing over her while she drew the tree, so that you could say my energy influenced her or any part of me influenced her. I wasn't even there. Great. Um, so, if uh, so, so where do we find uh, Dr. Janet? 
You can find me on my website, JanetCrane.com. Oh, perfect. So, like, well, so people, do they see you live or do they send in their, uh, their tree and then you, you mail them? Right, and well, if they want me to just, like, read their tree, they could right. go to tree to my Facebook page, Tree Reading, and post it on there, and then I read trees. Right. on Every week I read a few trees on my Facebook page. Dr. Janet, you really need your own show. You need to, <laughs> people could, like, email you and then each week and you email can Email me and it, I yeah. can read the... Read the um, yeah. Read the trees on the air. Or like five minute reading, you know. Yep, yeah, five perfect. minute readings on I, the air. I love how, how quick and simple and, and direct and to the point I said we were able to go through free volunteers within like a twenty minute sort of spent. To me the most interesting thing is it's very accurate. There's no guessing and it's so accurate that it really touches the person immediately because it's their tree and their thoughts and I don't have to know what the issues are. I don't have to know who's pulling her back or what's pulling her back. I don't have to know. But now she knows and she could do something about it. I don't have to do anything. She knows. Once you bring Great. it into awareness, you can deal with it. Great. Uh, so we're about to run out of time. And uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Janet, to be in our show tonight. And we want to thank all the volunteers for bravely uh, coming on to our channel and our show and uh, share a part of them that is they don't normally share. Uh, so this is Hypnotist Bernie. Join us next week, CCTV Channel 9, Cambridge.